Stabler fracture, posterior wall fracture. It is the most common Stabler fracture. That posterior wall fracture can be a simple fracture or associated with dislocation of the femoral head or rarely associated with a pipkin fracture. Posterior wall fracture can also be associated with a transverse fracture or posterior column fracture. The fixation always posteriorly. If you have a large posterior wall fracture associated with other fractures, you must go posteriorly to fix the wall. You can see a posterior wall fracture in the obturator view. You get the obturator view by the involved hip up 45 degrees. Because it's common, so we'll be interested in the involved hip will be up 45 degrees. We can also see the anterior column in the obturator view. So if you see a posterior wall, then you can see an anterior column. You will see the displacement also in the obturator view, and it's called the gold sign. Marginal impaction is more common in posterior acetabular wall fractures, and it should be recognized and corrected because it can lead to hip instability. CT scan is the study of choice, and you will see the marginal impaction of the acetabulum on the CT scan. Some pieces of the articular cartilage of the acetabulum will be impacted into the underlying cancellous bone in a non-anatomic position. The marginal impaction is identified in up to 25% of posterior fracture dislocations requiring open reduction. If the fracture of the posterior wall is comminuted, then the incidence of arthritis will be high. The size of the posterior wall fracture has an effect on the stability of the hip joint. Some authors believe that the wall size is not a reliable indicator for instability of the hip. If the hip is dislocated, hip reduction should be done urgently to minimize the incidence of avascular necrosis. Close reduction should be done in less than six hours. The risk of avascular necrosis depends on the interval between the injury and the reduction of the dislocation. In posterior dislocation of the hip, always check for injuries in the knee, such as a dashboard injury. In hip dislocation, there might be a concern of deceleration injury involving the aorta. Always check the sciatic nerve function. The perineal division of the sciatic nerve could be affected. Check for foot drop or sensation at the top of the foot. After close reduction, when the patient has a posterior wall fracture, assess the stability of the hip, especially if the fragment is small. The hip is usually stable if the fragment size of the stablum is less than 20%. More than 40%, the hip is unstable. Between 20 to 40%, Fragment size, the hip stability is undetermined. So we need to assess the stability of the hip by examination of the patient under general anesthesia utilizing fluoroscopy. And you're going to look at the obturator oblique view. The hip will be in flexion 
adduction and do axial load and then check the medial clear space for opening. Opening of the medial clear space suggests instability of the posterior wall fracture. In case of fracture dislocation, reduce the hip immediately, then fix the fracture later if the fracture needs fixation. What if you have a posterior wall fracture with marginal impaction? Then you will find pieces of the cartilage is impacted inside the joint. You will reduce the fracture, lift the cartilage, and apply bone graft behind it to support the cartilage pieces, then add a posterior plate fixation. Bear in mind not to insert screws in the danger zone of the establum. During posterior approach to the hip, keep the knee in flexion and the hip in extension, especially during traction to avoid sciatic nerve palsy. In comminuted posterior wall fractures, I use buttress plates to buttress the multiple fragments and to lock it in place, then I use a plate on top of it, like a wall protecting the small plates. We want to make sure the screws are not penetrating the joint. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.